Praise God. Well, I guess, are we having amp trouble or something? We're working on it. Our amps, uh, we're going to get some new amps. Our amps, we never know when they're going to quit working, and so we don't know which one is working tonight. So it sounds like the monitor one is working tonight. So anyway, uh, can you all hear me all right? Okay, as long as you can hear me, I don't have to yell. All right, praise God. You know, um, I want to talk to you tonight about something that's controversial. Uh, So I'm going to talk about the Bible. (laughs) Everything that you choose to believe concerning the Word of God, there is some other denomination that will tell you what you're believing is not right. You know, I was asked one time by a person of a particular denomination, he says, so are you one of those people that take the word of God literally? <laughs> I wanted to say, bless your darling heart and stupid head, don't you? You know, I do. I take the word of God literally. I take this as my guide, my handbook. And I, I made a vow many, many years ago that if the Holy Spirit would show me and illuminate my eyes and my heart to something in the word of God, that I would endeavor to put that into my life and uh, change my life if it needed to be to line up with the Word of God. And uh, I've lived that way for over 30 years. It's going on 40 years, maybe longer now. And you know what? I'm not drawn back now. It's too late for them to change my mind and tell me the Word of God is not something that we can go by. So I want to talk to you tonight uh, about prosper, prospering in the Lord. A lot of controversy about, well, the Lord doesn't want you to have too much, you know. We used to think that being poor was being humble, you know, and that that would get you closer to God. It, you know, a lot of misbeliefs, a lot of people quote things that they heard other people quote, and it's not in the Bible. And so let's just go to the Bible, and I want to talk to you about prosperity tonight. I'm going to talk biblical prosperity Is it God's will for us to prosper? And so some of you shake your heads and you say, yes, it it is. But, and I'm not going to define prosperity. Prosperity is is a big issue. It's something different to everybody. What's prosperous to you may not be prosperous to me. But we're not to judge one another. If I'm comfortable the way I'm living and I believe that God has supplied my needs and I'm okay with that, as long as I'm acting upon the Word and I'm doing what the Word of God says, then you know what? I'm trusting Him, all right? And some people say, you know, that prosperity, well, that's talking about soul prosperity. Well, yes, it is. But is he ta- we're talking about money, finances, your earthly possessions. All right, can we talk about that? So is it God's will for us to prosper? Let's just look in the Bible and look at Bible examples, okay? And, and some people talk about Jesus. They say, well, Jesus was poor. He became poor. Well, when did he become poor? When he died on the cross. Jesus was not poor. Jesus had a a house in Capernaum. Jesus had a staff. Jesus had a bookkeeper. He had a person that carried the money. I mean, he had to have a lot of money to take care of his team traveling all over and preaching the gospel. Amen. So we're not going to go there yet. But I want you to thir- turn to 3 John, verse 2. We're not going to go real fast. We're just going to give you a chance to uh, uh, look in your Bible, uh, get this down in your heart. And I- I'll tell you what, th- something happened to me, uh, and, I, and, and I think let's, t- let's take it back to this. We are not to judge one another. In other words, we need to keep our mouth off of one another. You may think something about me, but you shouldn't repeat it. You should cast it down if it's not biblical. You shouldn't entertain it. So there was a particular minister on TV. How many of you know, I I don't even know how expensive TV is. I know how expensive radio is. We were on the radio for a year. Uh, depending on where you are, uh, it cost us a couple thousand dollars a month for 15 minutes a day. I've heard television is way up in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
And so a TV minister, to uh, ask for donations to keep that ministry going, makes a lot of Christians upset. They say, well, who, he shouldn't be asking for money. Well, he wouldn't have to if you'd send him some. You know, he's preaching to, to millions. I don't even know how many millions they preach to at one time. And then some of these ministries, they fly all over the world and go to remote places where, where we can't even imagine going. And they, you know, to fly commercially, if you've ever flown commercially, it can be a real pain in the blessed assurance. It can be a real tough thing to do, especially if you're on a schedule. If you're on a schedule and you have to be in Australia on a particular day at a particular time to start your convention, and you get tied up on the runway, you get tied up with an aircraft, and you can't get there, you've blown thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So that's why some of these ministries have their own private airplanes. And so when they tell you, well, we're believing God for a, a faster aircraft, one that can go nonstop to these different places, don't get upset about that. You and I, you know, in the community we're in, I don't need a $55 million aircraft to get me home tonight. You don't either. So I'm not going to tell you to give in to my new airplane. Now, if I was booked all over the United States, and Pastor Dorothy and I could book all over the United States, all the time, we could be gone all the time. It's our choice not to. If we did, that would be good for the church to have an airplane so we could get there and get back on Sunday. But we choose not to do that. God hasn't laid it upon our hearts to do that. But if he did, then I'd want to tell you all, let's get in agreement. Let's, let's do this as a church. But So we need to get to the point to where we're not judging people. Uh, when I first got here and we started the church, and, and I've got to be honest with you, we've been here since 1984, so you do the math, what is that, 35 years now. Probably for the first 25 years, we worked two jobs. And we paid for most everything uh, in the church to build it. People gave donations and things, and we had a housing allowance. But it wasn't until about 10 years ago to where I didn't have to work, to where the church uh, board voted, a sal and they always voted a salary. But you know what? We didn't, know, we didn't take it, and, the, and, and, and they didn't even know that. They would vote it, and, and we wouldn't take it unless the church had it. And we wouldn't even take the housing allowance if the church didn't have it. And, and so, but so now... To come into the church now and see me driving a pretty nice sized pickup that, uh, you know, don't get offended at that. Don't get offended at that. I said, don't get offended at that. I worked for 25 years for practically nothing. How would you guys like to work on your job for 25 years and barely get a paycheck? So, so don't look at that. Sheila said, you know what, Pastor, you could take all the money in the church and we couldn't catch up for the 25 years where you didn't have much. And so, but we don't do, the, the church is our baby. This is where we are. We, you know, Pastor Dorothy and I would do anything to keep this church doors open. Are you listening to me? Amen. So we don't want to judge anybody. But when we first got here, I think we were here maybe two years. And, and uh, Ruth Ann's son, uh, I don't know why he did it, but they were living, he was, he was a teenager in high school, and he had a swimming pool. And he decided they didn't want the swimming pool anymore. And I don't know why. I don't need to know why. It's not the issue. And he asked me if, if I wanted it. I said, sure. And so he brought it over. Uh, and, and my kids had a swimming pool. And Sheila was going with a guy at that time. Uh, I guess we had been here three or four years. He got mad because we had a swimming pool in our backyard. Well, you know what? You got all mad and you think I'm stealing the church's money. It was given to me. Amen. I, I was given an, an, a, a Mark, Lincoln Mark 8, Gavinci series. I wanted one of those cars ever since they came out. And I was given one here in the church. Man, that, look, that was one of those great big long mafia cars, you know. I mean, it was a big old thing. I mean, it had gold, uh, it had gold in, the, in the back uh, window, the, the, the little porthole window. It was gold laced in there. And you know what? People had a hard time with that. I finally, the Lord said, you need to give that away. I gave it away. But it was given to me. And, that, and you know what? After that, the Lord said, you gave it away for the wrong reason. 
you gave it away. I told you to give it away, but he said, we're not going to do that again. The people need to get used to prosperity. They need to, when I first came to this town, I had an old Pinto station wagon and 300 bucks. So you see, you can judge people. Now, I did the same thing. When we were at Ramah, uh, we, had to, we had to pay our tuition and, and we had a card. And every month when you paid your tuition, they had a faith shield that they'd punch January, February, March, April. Every month that you paid, they'd punch that out. And you walked around and you found yourself walking down the hallways looking at everybody's badge to see who had their tuition paid for. And if you came across somebody that had the whole year paid for, <laughs> you wanted to bite your tongue and say, Ugh! But we sat on the second row behind a couple that uh, we, were, we were believing for food, we were believing for the tuition, we were believing for everything. Uh, and, and guys, we, I mean, we literally didn't have much. And I'm sitting behind a couple that we've had them come here and preach. They're really good friends of ours now. But both of them had their tags marked for the whole year. Their tuition was paid for the whole year. And we, this, we were already into the fourth or fifth day. You had 10 days grace. And if you didn't have it by the 10th day of the month, they kicked you out. This is a faith church. This is a faith school. We don't want your faith check. We want cash. If you can't pay it by the 10th, you're out. And so we're a fifth or sixth day into the month, or the end of the month when our tuition was due. And man... We, we don't have any food, we don't have any money, we looked in the mailbox, we, looked up, we flipped over everywhere looking for the money and it wasn't there. And I looked at their cards and, and Lee and Eddie had theirs all paid for, for the whole month. Oh, I was so mad. I was jealous, I was upset, I was angry, I wanted to go to my closet and say, God, why isn't this working for me? After all, I gave my resort away. After all, I got two kids. After all, you know, you want to lay your credentials out there. And so if you, don't, if you don't watch it, you'll judge somebody. And she had a diamond on her hand. That thing looked as big as a baseball. And I'm thinking, man, they're rich. They could pay ours. If I'd stop complaining, maybe they would pay ours, you know. But you've got to shut up. You've got to get your eyes off of everybody else. And you know what happened? It wasn't too long after that. We got $50 in the mail. First we tithed it, $5. Now I tithed that and I'm thinking, all right, we can go get some milk and bread for the kids or crackers or popcorn or something. And while I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with this $45, the Lord said, I want you to go over to Lee and Eddie's house and give them $20. This is the lady with the great big diamond and has their tuition all paid for for the whole year. You want to be disobedient and say, get behind me, Satan. I need that 20 bucks. But you know what? If you listen to the Holy Ghost, you don't know what's going on. And so we, I said, honey, uh, does it bear witness with you? And we talked it over. She said, yeah. So we got in our pickup truck and we went over to Lee and Eddie's and knocked on the door and said, the Lord told us to give you this $20. And she started screaming. You all remember Lee? Have you ever met her? She was here teaching faith. Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Oh, we're going to have food tonight! Our kids have been eating popcorn and water for three days. Wow. So we went home rejoicing that we were able to help them. Now we still had, so you figure we gave 20 to them, 5 to the Lord. So that's 25 out of the 50, so we got 25 left for us, right? So we went home, and I'm thinking, wow, we believe for this 50, but you know what? There was a knock on the door, and it was Jim from across the street. He was an ex-Hell's Angel guy, converted, thank God, hallelujah. But he was big. He's a big dude. He used to, you all know, I, he used to pick me up and kiss me. <laughs> I mean, he was huge. So I saw him, but I had a, little, a stool at the front door, and I looked out the peephole, and I saw it was Jim, and so I opened the door. At least he didn't have to pick me up, but he kissed me. And he said, the Lord told me to come over and give you this. I was blessed today, and he told me to come over and give you $100.
Glory to God. Man, I felt so rich. That's prosperous. 1983, I was laying in our bedroom on a rollaway bed, or a, a, what do you call them, studio bed. You know one of those ones that you pull out and the mattress is about that thick and the springs poke you when you're sleeping and, and the frame gets you in the middle of the back. You know one of those I'm talking about? We're sleeping on one of those and the kids don't have any dressers for their clothes and we don't have much furniture or anything. And I'm laying there one morning and I realize, man, I am one of the richest men in the world because I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Things don't matter. Amen? So we need to not judge one another. That's the first thing I wanted to get across to you. Verse 2, 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou or you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he wants us to have it in balance. He wants us to prosper in the Lord, and he does want us to prosper. He desires us to prosper. How many of you, when you were a young couple and you got married and the first baby was on its way, you sat around and you laid your hands on, on the belly of the baby and said, well, I'll be glad when you're born. I hope you're as poor as Joe Dirt Dumb when you get born. I don't want you to have nothing when you're born. How many of you believe that for your kids? No. God wants us to prosper. He's not against us having things, guys. Can I have an amen? amen. He wishes that you would prosper. He says, that's my... My highest goal, my biggest desire is for you to prosper and be in health. Look at Proverbs 10.22. Proverbs 10.22, and we've got the scripture here on the board. It says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes you rich. Rich. Everybody say rich. rich. And you see, rich, if you're not careful, let's go back to judging. Several years ago, uh, I bought a Corvette. It was a 2004 Corvette. Um, got a good deal on it. It was nice convertible. I loved that car. Uh, you know what? But I sat at home, and I didn't bring it to church for a long time because I thought, what are the people going to say if I drive up at church in a Corvette? And you know, people, people are people. When you say Corvette, you think, woo! But, you know, then I had that car for several years, and people got used to me driving it, and it was nice. I had that, and I had the other Corvette that the church bought me. I had two Corvettes. Now I'm vetless. <laughs> but I traded that Corvette in. And, you know, people, people, there were some comments about that Corvette, and I traded it in on a pickup truck. Not this one, but a black one. I only had the black one for a short time, and Randy started buying white ones, and I saw how easy it was to take clean, keep those clean. So this black was hard to keep clean. So I saw that red one on the showroom floor, and it had all the, this got all the bells and whistles, the top and the backup lights, and it does everything. And it cost me twice as much as that Corvette did. But you know what? We're in a country area and you can good old boy can drive a pickup truck and nobody will say a word Amen. but that pickup truck cost me more than that corvette that's right so we have to watch it now so when i drive up in here in a corvette you don't know where i got it from <laughs> hallelujah randy might have bought it for me you don't know Amen. Uh, Proverbs 10, 22, he says, The blessings of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. So we should be able to enjoy our prosperity. But he said persecution will come. Persecution will come. Uh, a, a, a guy that I graduated Raymond with, not the same year, but I know him pretty well, was going to church in Tulsa, going to a large church, which you, what we would consider a mega church, and the board decided to get him a, um, a membership to, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, to the golf course? Country club. Country cl got him a country club membership for $10,000. He got mad at that. That pastor doesn't need a membership at the country club. And he quit the church because of it. You see, he's judging that pastor. 
If he's got a mega church and he's, he's running with the big boys and he's, that church has is, is, is got a big expense and stuff, he's running with people that you and I would never run with unless we're in that group. If you're in that group, what's wrong with that? I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it. You know, if the church wants to bless their pastor, then, then let them bless them. Amen. Praise God. Look at Philippians 4.19. And all these scriptures are in your Bible. It says, but my God. What about your God? Yes. We serve the same God, don't we? Yes. Amen. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now your need may be different than my need. I went to Guatemala. And do you know what they think about you people that own automobiles? You Americans waste money. What do you all need cars for? My goodness, some of the places that, that you all work, you got to drive 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 miles to go to work. You're not going to use a, a bicycle. In Guatemala, everything is, is close by where they, where they have their needs met. If they have a bicycle, they're prosperous. Are you listening to me? In the compound where I was when I was preaching, they had one van for the whole school, for everybody in that compound. One van. And that thing, uh, I mean, it's crazy in Guatemala. You ever been there? Oh my goodness, the way they drive. You better be in faith. I mean, they, they, they drive, oh my goodness, they, go, they drive down those rickety old, ratty old, bumpy old streets, and they just, mur, 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 and they're cutting it, blowing the horn, and if they hit you, they just keep blowing the horn and go. I mean, mur, 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 these cars are all dented up and smashed up. And, but they just drive, they just, wow, it's different. I'm saying, Ooh. But God will supply all your needs by his riches in glory. I don't know about you, but I don't see heaven as being broke. I see and I read about the streets being paved with uh, transparent gold. Amen. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 13. We're looking in the Old Testament. We're looking at some scriptures. Let's, let's go kind of fast here, all right? Look, is this in your Bible? All right? It shall come to pass. Now, he's talking about this is part of uh, the covenant that he made with Israel. But how many of you know you're the new Israel? You're the new Jerusalem. You're born again. It will come to pass if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all, everybody say all. all. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. Blessed will you be in the city. Some of you live in the city. Some of you live in a suburb. Some of you live in a neighborhood. Some of you live in the country. But he said, you'll be blessed in the city and you'll be blessed in the field. Amen. You'll be blessed in the fruit of your body. So that means your children will be blessed. The fruit of the ground. If you like to plant uh, landscaping and flowers and shrubs and corn and peas and garden, it's going to be blessed. Amen. The fruit of your cattle. That means our animals, our pets are blessed. Amen. And the fruit of your cattle and the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Well, I don't have any sheep, but I have animals. And that means they're blessed. So I don't have a problem praying for healing for my animals. Blessed you'll be in your basket. So it means if Pastor Dorothy takes me on a picnic, we're blessed. Amen. And in your store. That means my cupboards, my refrigerator, my freezer. It's going to be blessed. Blessed will you be when you come in. That means when I come to Mustang, I'm blessed. You see, I've gotten, I've gotten a few jobs like that, and I tell people when they come to church how to go on an interview for a job. It, it's not arrogant. You have to say it in the right attitude. But if you'll hire me, you'll be blessed. I'm bringing my blessing into this organization. 
And you know, I've, had to, I've told that to restaurants. We, we told that to a, a man that built a, a restaurant, a pizza place, in Alpena, Michigan. He was a Jewish man. And we found out about, man, he had good pizza, but he had no customers. It was a new place. He, in small communities, how many of you know you have to be accepted? Oh, yeah. Yet I do a proving time. And uh, he was having a hard time getting customers. And so uh, we went there. It was really good food. Our kids played video games. and We, had, we told him, man, this is the best pizza we've ever had. Now, and we're going to tell the people in the church to come here after church. And he said, because we're going to start coming here, you're going to prosper. Your business is going to do good. Now, I'm talking to a Jewish man. And we told that to him. Blessings follow us. Blessings overtake us. So people from the church, we told them about the pizza, and that's where they needed to go. They started going there and started filling his place up. He started giving us 10% off. And then later, everybody in the church that would come. And then when we, le we were leaving, uh, we told them we were leaving to, co to come to uh, Oklahoma, that we were leaving the resort, and he, and he didn't want us to go. Well, I guess not. But we told them it was Jesus that was doing this. I'm telling this to a Jewish man now. And I said, uh, we're going to leave you a Bible. And we marked out the Romans road to salvation. And we said, if you'll read this and put Jesus in your life after we leave, you'll still keep prospering. We had, it was a tool to open up so we could witness to him. You see, where you work is blessed because you're there. You need to have that attitude. And don't get cocky or arrogant about it. But just realize those blessings follow you. Amen. The neighborhood where I live, the people around us are blessed because I live there. Amen. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So tornadoes aren't going to come and tear our cul-de-sac up. Amen. Why? Because I live there. Amen. But I'm still going to get in the storm shelter. Amen. That's right. How many of you know there's a devil out there? And you don't do everything perfect. We're going to talk about that Sunday. Anyway, come back. All right, where are we at? Next verse. Bless uh, the Lord to cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They'll come out against you one way and before, flee before you seven ways. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Scatter. Let your enemies be scattered. Let God arise, your enemies be scattered. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouses and all that you set your hand unto, and he shall bless you in the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. The Lord shall establish you a holy people to himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways. And all of the people of the earth, what's this for? It's to establish his covenant. All the people of the earth shall see that the Lord is called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make your plenteous in goods. Sounds like prosperous to me, doesn't it to you? Amen. In the fruit of your body, the fruit of the cattle, the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord has sworn to your fathers to give unto you. The Lord shall open up to thee the good, his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto the land in the season and to bless the work of your hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, uh, shall be above only and not beneath, if thou wilt hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God. What are the commandments we're to walk in today? Love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your enemy as yourself. Know your neighbor and your enemy. Right? Love your enemies. You don't have to like them. But you have to love them. Hearken to the commandments of the Lord, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Observe them and to do them. Observe them and do them. Be doers of the word. Amen. Glory to God. God's people have always been blessed. Now, it may take some time. You know, like Pastor and I said, it took 25 years. We know people that have gone out of Bible college and they went in two or three years and had hundreds of people. You know, if you're not careful as a pastor, you can compare yourself to that. You know what? I'm on assignment and this is where God told me to come. This is where I'm going to stay. And this is where I'm going to be until he tells me to leave. Amen. Amen. 
Look at uh, Job chapter 1, verse 1. All of his servants throughout the Bible were blessed. Job chapter 1, verse 1 said, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Verse 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Glory to God. Solomon was exceeding rich. You can't have a problem with prosperity. Don't get mad at people that prosper. Amen. You know, people may be a little more comfortable with the way, if you come to our house uh, now. Pastor Dorothy and I downsized. We live in a little 1,630 square foot house, three bedrooms. But the house we had before that was almost 3,000 square feet. It had more bathrooms than we have bedrooms now. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, if people came over there, you know what? They're going to look at that and say, hmm, what's he doing with that kind of house? Well, the Lord blessed us with it. We got a good deal on it. Amen. But after the, you know, the kids got married and they started having grandkids and they weren't coming over as much, and I, 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 you know, the Lord actually laid it out upon our hearts to downsize. And we did it, and by, as soon as, you know, the, it's important to listen to the Lord. I've never told this to any of you. I've never said this to any of you. But we moved when? Three years ago in June or July? Three years ago in July, we moved. We sold that house, downsized, cut our budget way back, almost in half. We didn't know exactly why we were doing that. We had our own understanding in it. We moved into that house. We closed on it in July, three years ago. And from that point uh, on the church's income, or the church's offerings were cut in half, almost in half the next month. Had we not downsized when the Lord told us to and we would have kept that same budget, we may have lost the whole ball of wax. Thank God we listened. Thank God we listened. Amen. Well, pastor, don't you miss that 3,000 square foot house? Well, not really. I get to save my voice because Pastor and I were sleeping at opposite ends of the house. We had different sleeping habits, so I slept in one room and she slept down. Hey, Dorothy, are you awake yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. But we've learned to sleep together again. I don't bug her and she don't bug me. We've learned, we've learned that if one person is snoring, if you just reach over and grab their arm, they'll quit. <laughs> it works. You've got to squeeze harder. Russell, you just got to squeeze harder. Carla, if you punch him in the elbow, you know, elbow him, that'll work. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's look at, I'm too personal. You guys, I'm an open, I, I'm a window preacher. You know me inside and out. I get home, pastor says, you talk too much. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Watch this. Uh, in Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before, in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept of him this uh, great kingdom, and thou hast given him a son to set on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made me this, my, made thy servant uh, king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. And thy servant is in the midst of the people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for the multitude. Give therefore your servant an understanding heart to judge the people, and I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. And Solomon had asked this thing. And the Lord said to him, Because thou hast asked this thing, thou hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked for the life of thine enemies, 
but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I've also given thee that which thou hast not asked for, both what? Riches and honor. Did you notice? He wants us to prosper and be in health as our soul prospers. Keep your priorities straight. <coughs> Guys, we are, we are increasing. We're blessing. We're, we're, we're supporting more missions again now than we had in a, in a while. Uh, we, we sent to Rama. We're, we're word partners with Rama. We're supporting Austria. Guys, we're giving and we're increasing, and the Lord is looking upon that. And we're going to continue to prosper, praise God. Amen. He said, I've made you riches and honor. Do you notice this? You know, I can preach uh, the same message. I could listen to Kenneth Copeland, for example. I could listen to him and preach his outline step by step, and people will listen to him quicker than they will me. Why? Because he's rich. He's richer. He's richer. Amen. Now you all know me. You'll listen to me and, and, and take me at my word. So, well, don't look at me like that. <laughs> but you can read it in Proverbs and Ecclesiastics. A, a rich man and a poor man can say the same thing and a rich man will be listened to. Now I paraphrased it, but it's in the Bible. Amen. So he said, I've given you riches and honor. So honor comes with the riches. So don't ever look at people and, and get upset at people. Well, I just can't stand to go on the on north side of town or up there in that particular end of town because rich people are snobby. No, they're not snobby. They're very nice people. Amen. They're only snobby if you think they're snobby. Rich people don't have to be snobby. Amen. So don't get upset at people. If you're, if you're criticizing rich people, you'll never be rich. Amen. So then you'd have to criticize yourself. Amen. He said that so that there shall never be any among thee. Guys, I'm out of time. Kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Wow. Amen. There's a lot that comes with obeying the word of God. We're going to look at this again next week, guys. We're going to find out. We're going to go into the New Testament. We're going to look at Abram. We're going to find out that Solomon was rich and how many oxen he had and how many uh, sheep he had and how many servants. De what David, what he gave into the church to build the temple. I mean, himself, he gave millions himself out of his own treasury. Solomon was so rich that he, his servants couldn't keep up with counting his money. His treasury department couldn't keep up. So finally he called a meeting and he said, Hey guys, you're not keeping up with all my blessings and all my treasures. So take all the silver, put it in wheelbarrows and take it outside of town and dump it in a heap. Stop counting the silver. That's pretty rich. Stand on your feet, everybody. So guys, don't be intimidated. Don't, don't be over, don't be humble. Or don't, don't, don't be, have a false humility. Don't have a false humility. It's not wrong to have things as long as you're willing to, to let them pass through your hands and be a steward of them. Amen. Amen. We're blessed. Father, we thank you for the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. We thank you, Father God, that prosperity is in your word. And that, Father, prosperity is as each person desires to prosper in their soul and in their attitude towards you, Father God. Help us, Lord, not to judge our brothers and sisters and look at material things and be critics of their blessings. We thank you, Lord, and give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are dismissed, guys. And we'll see Come join us at New Beginnings Family Church, located in Mustang, Oklahoma, at 1615 East State Highway 152. You can find us online on Facebook and YouTube or at walkbyfaith.info. To contact us, call 405-261-6887. And remember, you don't need a second chance. You need a new beginning.